Okay, in this short video, I just want to talk about what it means for a function to be what we call differentiable. Differentiable. So let's look at differentiable functions. This property of being differentiable is really useful throughout calculus for, for many reasons. Several theorems in calculus assume that you're working with differentiable functions. That allows you to make certain conclusions about those functions. So let's, let's work to understand what this means. So we say that, we say that the function f is differentiable. It takes practice saying and writing this word for sure. f is differentiable at some number a. f is differentiable at some number a if f prime of a exists. Now it's kind of a weird thing to say. Basically it's saying the function is called differentiable if the derivative exists. Now don't forget that f prime of a is a limit, right? So in other words, a function is differentiable at a value if this, the limit, this particular limit, the derivative limit, exists, okay? So, so let's look at a couple quick examples. Uh, let me pause for a moment. This is how you say a function is differentiable at a value. Let's say uh, what it means to, to describe the f as differentiable. f is differentiable on an open interval. So an open interval is one with parentheses on each end. You don't include the endpoints. So we say if f is differentiable on an open interval, if, you could probably guess it, if it is differentiable, if it is differentiable at every value at every value in the interval. Okay? So we know what it means to be differentiable at a value, and now if you get f being differentiable at values within an open interval, then we call it differentiable on that open interval. Very simple, right? So, so let's take a couple examples. Um, let's use a different color here. So I'm not gonna show why this is true. In fact, I just did it in a previous video. Um, but if f of x equals 1 over x plus 1, then through some work, you could see pretty quickly that f prime of x equals negative 1 over x plus 1 squared. Okay? So, so let's discuss the differentiability of the function f. Well, the, when you take the derivative of f, you get this formula. And the function f, the function f is differentiable if this formula exists at that value. Well, <coughs> this, this formula can only be calculated, can only be calculated if x does not equal negative 1, right? If x is negative 1, you'd be dividing by 0. We can't do that. But any other value for x, you could calculate the output of this formula. So what we say here is we go back. We see, we see when f prime can be calculated, right? We see when f prime can be calculated. And then we go back to f, and we can say, well, since the derivative of f can be calculated here, we say that f, f is differentiable f is differentiable if x does not equal negative 1. Any other x value, f is differentiable. So typically what we do is use an interval notation. So we'd say f is differentiable on, when you go to intervals, you say on, not at, or something like this. So I say f is differentiable on the interval notation negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to infinity, okay? So notice that I don't say f prime is differentiable. f is differentiable because of properties exhibited by the derivative of that function. 
So it's really important when you start learning this, when you start working with it, to really distinguish between f and f prime. If f prime exists, then f is differentiable. So make sure you get a handle on that. Okay? Let's try another one similar to this. Let's, uh, let's suppose g of x equals the square root of x plus 1. Again, through some work, you could find its derivative, and you could say that g prime of x equals 1 over 2 times the square root of x plus 1. Okay, This video is not about how to calculate that. It's just about discussing the differentiability of functions. Well, this function, the g prime of x function, exists, this guy exists, well, clearly x can't be negative 1 because we'd be dividing by 0, but also x can't be numbers smaller than negative 1, like negative 1.2, right? If x were negative 1.2 and you plugged it in, negative 1.2 plus 1 is negative, and the square root of a negative number is an imaginary number. So x can't be negative 1 or anything to the left of negative 1. So x has to be greater than negative 1. So we say here the function g is differentiable. Let's go right to the interval notation. The interval notation for everything bigger than negative 1 is parenthesis negative 1 comma infinity. Okay. So this video is all about understanding differentiability which, of course, takes into account the derivative function itself. And basically being able to find the domain of the derivative. You have to understand when this value exists. You have to find the x values for which this value exists to determine where a function is differentiable. Now, one really cool thing about this differentiable property is the following theorem. And you don't want to get this backwards, okay? So this is really important. We looked at continuity of functions, and now we're looking at differentiability of functions. The differentiable part is actually more, more strict than the continuous part, okay? So uh, that can help you kind of remember this theorem. This theorem says if f is differentiable, if f is differentiable at a value a, then f is continuous at a. So differentiability is a sufficient condition for continuity. If f is differentiable there, it has to be continuous there. But it's not always true that a function, if a function is continuous, it is also differentiable. So that's not enough, okay? However, if we look at what's called the contrapositive of this, so uh, if you take further math, you'll see this in future classes. But the contrapositive guarantees that if you have an if-then statement, you can reverse it if you make both of these conditions opposite of what they are. That's a very rough description here. So the contrapositive has to be true also, which would say, well, if f is not continuous at a, right? If f is not continuous at a, then the opposite of this condition can occurs. Then f is not differentiable. It's a long word. There we go. Then f is not differentiable at a. So we can show that a function is continuous if we can show it's differentiable, and we can show that a function is not differentiable if we can show that it's not continuous. So make sure you get the direction of this theorem and its contrapositive correct. Okay, uh, but this is this is really important when you get uh, when we get further down into calculus.